today we're going to talk about something that Miss Jamie asked me about, which is what do I need to know about applying for college? Like what, what are the basic steps of mm -hmm. doing that? Do you want to tell them why you're asking? Because I played house. That's right. That's the honest answer. Never got to go. So, and I have a son who's ready to go and I need the knowledge. So, and I was the first person on both sides of my family to go to college. So my parents didn't know this either. And we sort of wandered into it blind. And I just wish there had been somebody that we could have asked about this stuff, but there mm -hmm. wasn't. So let's go down the list because I've got a pretty decent amount of experience with this, um, with both my children and then helping out some of their children. I'm over just real quick. Okay. okay. No problem. Okay. okay. You don't have to. Right, because everything I tell you, I'm gonna put on our blog, and then you can just, you know, go on the same for you. But I mean, you can write right, it down yeah, if I'm you want school. to. Yeah, I'm I have to write. Yeah, I do too. If I write it down, I remember yeah. it. If I don't write it down, I forget it. Exactly. Anywho, all right. So the first thing is, you typically need to pay attention to your grade point average or your GPA, right? So in general, you need to have a 2.0 or better to get admitted into a college. Obviously, the higher your GPA, the more likely you are to be admitted. And there are some schools out there that actually go all the way to a five on their scale. Like I, our school maxed out at four. So if you had straight A's, you got a 4.0. But I know that some of the schools with AP classes or um, college credit plus now go all the way up to five. So I think there's some sort of sliding scale for admissions where they factor that in. But typically the higher your GPA, the more likely you are to get in. Now. What do you do if your GPA is not so hot, right? So let's say you're at a 2.5, right? So you're in that middle of the road, sort of C plus-ish area, and you're not sure if you're gonna get in, okay? The second thing that's really important that they look at is your test scores. So depending on what kind of degree program you're going into, for your undergraduate degree or your um, associate's degree, they'll probably look at either your SATs or your ACTs. And I know for my kids, um, my daughter did the ACT and that was good enough. She was very happy with her results and that was enough to sort of stop that process. But my son, because he likes to A-B test everything, he took both the SAT and the ACT um, just to compare and contrast. And he actually did a little bit better on the ACT, which is why I now understand why the school that they went to encouraged kids to take the ACTs. Mm -hmm. Evidently, our kids do a little bit better on the ACTs. When I was in the same situation so many years ago, the, the ACT was relatively new. Um, a lot of colleges didn't take it seriously, and so you had to get your SATs. Um, and they changed the scale on them too now. There's different numeric values, evidently. But anywho, um, but I would strongly encourage you to go to the college that you want to attend, go to their website, and see if they're still requiring those test scores. Because of COVID, a whole lot of schools have waived their testing requirements. So kids, just so you know, I'm looking at going back for my PhD and part of the PhD, if you wanna get into a graduate program like for your master's or your doctorate, so let's say you already have your undergraduate, you need to typically take the GREs unless you're going into a specialty program like law, for example, and then you need to take your LSATs, for example. Um, but for the most part, the GRE is the SAT or ACT of the graduate program world. So. I know for me, just looking at, I had identified four colleges for my PhD program, and two of them required um, the GREs and two of them don't because of COVID. So I would look. If you can waive that test score requirement, um, that's just a little bit of pressure off your plate, and that's very, very important. Letters of recommendation also help. So let's say that the test requirements are waived. Um, if they are waived, then you probably want to get some letters of recommendation for um, like maybe a teacher that um, knows you really well or um, knows what you're capable of and has received a degree of his or her own or their own. Um, they typically know what the schools are looking for. If you are involved in any kind of community activities, um, if you do any kind of volunteering, if you help out with the nursery at your church, I mean, there's a whole lot of different um, opportunity. If you work, maybe you have a job. I know my daughter had a job at a daycare center. We didn't need a letter of recommendation from the head of the daycare center for her, but mm -hmm. um, it helps. But typically, if you... Um, 
If you can get an academic recommendation, it tends to hold a little bit more weight than a community or volunteer recommendation. Um, and I'll, uh, just so you know, because when you ask people to do this for you, they're gonna say, yeah, I'm happy to do that for you, but I don't know what you want me to write. So for all of you students out there that are prepping this, just put together an outline, maybe like three to five bullet points of what you want somebody to put about you in your letter of recommendation so that you can get into the program that you wanna get. And that just sort of helps them write it. Cause adults, as you know, we procrastinate over stuff that seems arduous and difficult that we don't wanna do. But if you give us like a little cheat sheet, we can crank it out pretty quick. So for your letters of rec, just have a couple little bullet points of what you want them to cover. And that'll be like a huge, huge help to you. Uh, most applications, and this is where co college applicants tend to freak out, ask for a personal statement. There's usually a word count requirement. So it's 500 to a thousand words. And you have to write a personal statement about why you wanna to go to college which I think for most students is extremely intimidating. I would recommend that you write it like you would tell your best friend why you wanna to go to college. And then you can edit it to be more formal. Um, but just to start with, why do you wanna go? What do you wanna do with your life? What excites you about college? If, you're, if you've got certain things that you're afraid of when it comes to going to college, put that in the letter too. I mean, they're looking for who you are to help inform, are you ready? That's, that's really the only reason that the personal statement exists because there are kids that graduate from high school that just don't have um, either that sense of self-determination or um, they've never been tested quite like they're tested when nobody's pushing them because nobody pushes you guys in college. I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to enforce that enough. I don't think they do that in college. They don't remind you to turn things in. Your parents can't opt in to watch if you're turning in your homework or not. So like, it is literally all on you. If you wanna do it, you do it. So the last piece of it is grants versus scholarships versus loans, right? Okay, so let's, let's start with the ugly, yucky, gross part first, which is student loans. Student loans are gross. Um, and I will say I have nothing but sympathy and respect for college students now because when I went to school, the average APR for a student loan was 2.1%. And I don't think it's anything like that now. I think it's in the double digits. And that makes me very sad because the government should be subsidizing education because we want people to be educated so that they can achieve their dreams. Like that's a big part of being in America, right? That's right. America, America, you can get your dreams done, you know? So yeah. But I would just look for the lowest APR possible. Your parents or another adult probably is going to need to co-sign for you because you probably don't have enough credit history. Now, if you've been emancipated at age 16, for example, and you're living on your own, you're probably fine to sign for your own loan, but that's not the case for the majority of college students. Most high schools, if you reach out to your guidance counselor, have a list of scholarships that they know that their students are likely to receive. Um, if you are a senior and you are looking to attend college in the fall of 22, most of those scholarship applications are due around April 1st. Um, we're shooting this at the beginning of March, so you've got a couple of weeks probably by the time I edit and post this video to get that taken care of. So typically spring semester applications for scholarships and grants will close. Um, the difference between a scholarship and a grant, a scholarship is usually a private entity. So like the Kiwanis Club, for example, here in Ohio, um, will give $500 to a student who they really like the personal statement, they get good recommendations from their teachers or other you know, volunteer community adults. Um, and that's how that works. A grant is typically government subsidized. So the government determines what fields they want people to work in and they will help pay for people to get degrees in those programs. Um, I will find the website that lists all the grants for governments and I will post it in the description of this video for you as well. And then once you take these tests, if you take the test, you will receive all kinds of direct mail from colleges and universities that you already pre-qualified to attend just based on your test scores. So after you take your SAT, your ACT, your GRE, your LSAT, you're going to start to get direct mail in your actual physical mailbox. Whatever email address you put down on that test is gonna to start to receive a whole lot of offers for you to attend those colleges and universities. 
If you already know where you want to go when you take one of those tests, you can just list the institutions that you want to send your scores to and they'll start communicating with you accordingly. And then you'll plan your site visits. Um, there's a lot of virtual opportunities to learn more about schools as well. There's a lot of Facebook groups for parents and incoming students. Awesome. Um, so yeah, that's roughly how it works. Um, if you have more specific questions, feel free to comment on the video and I can answer them either by replying to your comment or if it's a longer answer that's needed, I might point you to the blog because I might have to get all dreamy in my response. But um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's intimidating when you start because it's just such a process and there's steps to go through. So like you can't go to step four until you've gone to step one, but it's not that bad um, and it's pretty approachable. And because we as a nation want more people to receive, higher education degrees, there are a lot of programs that are out there designed to help you succeed at getting in. Um, once you get in, there's a lot of school programs that help you stay successful. So, you know, keep the faith. If you're like, oh crap, I got in. Now what do I do? Oh God, no, they think I'm yeah. smart. What do I do? You know, there's lots of programs that help you be successful there as well. So hopefully this was helpful. Oh no. Was this, this helpful was, for you? Yeah, very much. Okay, good, good. Um, any questions you have, again, just let us know. And um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, if there's any parents listening, how do you have your child include you? Ooh, ah. Your yep. child is saying, oh, I'm talking to a counselor, and oh, I'm doing this, that, or the other, but you are not seeing anything. What do you recommend? I recommend that you reach out to the counselor and just validate that what you're being told is correct um, because sometimes they're aware of let's say three out of five steps but there's two that they're not aware of mm -hmm. and that's where the counselor can be like yep i've talked to so and so and they did this this but they still haven't done that or that right okay. they tend to know all right and if they don't know then you gotta sit your kid down and go okay i just learned from a youtube video that these are all the things that are expected or since I'm awesome and have her, I'm going to just say, we're going to go talk to Miss April. <laughs> but okay, I was curious about that because I know that's probably a question, especially with parents that never went to college and they know their child wants, they know their child needs to go to college and they want to, they have nowhere to go. There's not a big in here and finish here. Mm -hmm. It's just all, oh my God, what do I do? Because I want to be... I want to make sure he gets everything he needs. The scariest part of it, I will say for me, is that there are deadlines. And if you miss those deadlines, you're waiting a whole nother year or at least a semester. Wow. So you need to know at least when the deadlines are. Okay. There's always one deadline for early admission. There's a separate deadline for regular spring, right? Mm -hmm. For the fall admission. Um, so your early decision stuff, I think has to be in sometime in October. And I think the regular deadline is sometime around March, I think. Um, but again, it, de it depends it on the school, depends. so you just have to look. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. All right, kids, until we do something else, we'll talk to you later, like, subscribe. Yay!